Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Minneapolis Washburn High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of high school girls basketball. Today we have an intercity matchup with section implications in Class 2A as the Minneapolis Washburn Millers host the Humboldt Hawks. Washburn at 10 and 6, Humboldt at 10 and 4. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Keaton here with Alex Nagel, and uh, before we analyze this matchup. We do want to take the time to uh, acknowledge and uh, pay respect to our fallen comrade Tony Gear. He passed away earlier this week and he, of all places that we've gone to, it's Washburn where he went to high school and he was very instrumental in getting high school basketball the coverage it deserves. Uh, no question about it Mike. Sure, sure was and, and it seems uh, cruelly ironic in many respects that we would be here tonight of all nights. And on top of that, I found out uh, the athletic director, Daniel Pratsky, was a classmate of his, and they went to high school together. So a very surreal moment for all of us, and uh, we certainly want to pay our respects and salute Tony Gear for his contributions. We certainly miss you. But we've got a great game, and I'm sure he would love to come out here and watch this. Two primarily one-player teams, but both are very proficient. With Minneapolis Washburn, it's Chase Coley, who leads the state in rebounds and blocks, and for Humboldt, Lachey Holt, who leads the state in steals. Yeah, that, this makes for a very intriguing contest for sure, Mike. You know, you look at this Minneapolis Washburn team, 19 wins last year, got to the section final and lost, and they have bigger goals this year. They think that they've got the tools to get to the big state, and, you know, a game like tonight, this is where they can really prove themselves. So with... Teams represented by players who are among the leaders in the state category, something's got to give. What will be the key that influences this game? Well, you know, I, I think taking care of the basketball, number one. You, know, you, you have to be able to take care of the basketball and you have to be able to defend. I think Minneapolis Washburn has the edge there. Uh, you know, secondly, defense. You know, what can you create with your defense? Can you create turnovers? Well, that's going to be key, I think, in this contest. Speaking of keys, here's a look at the keys to the game, and ball control is a major one for both teams. Obviously, turnovers may influence the outcome, points off turnovers, and that can set a fast break, so both teams will want to protect the ball because they know how potent the threats are. For Humboldt specifically, they want to keep Washburn to one and done possessions because Coley is such a proficient rebounder and could lead to a lot of second chances and a frustrating night for Humboldt defensively. For Washburn, we talked about again, ball control. They want to protect it from Lachey Holt because if she has a sense to snipe the ball, she will. And she got some practice at those skills last summer playing AAU ball and playing a lot of time at the guard position. Washburn will also want to put in a fast tempo, play multiple possessions, and try to wear Humboldt out by playing a very quick game. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be another key for him, obviously. You, you talk about the rebounding edge. You're obviously a big edge there, I think, for, for Washburn. And if they can control the boards, both on offense and defense, that's going to be very tough for, uh, for Humble, I think, tonight. Starting lineups are coming up in a moment. You're watching high school basketball. Seeing Humble Hawks change from our last broadcast earlier this season. Number three. Tiresha Akis will get the start. She goes by Shea Shea. She's a 5'3 sophomore guard. Santana Castillo, senior forward, 5'8, number 13. Number 25, Selena Seals, 5'5 junior guard. Number 33, Daniel Hernandez, 5'8 senior forward. And number 45, Lachey Holt, 5'10 senior forward. Haley Green not playing tonight due to an illness. For the home Washburn Millers, number one, Audrey Devon, 5'9 senior guard. Number 10, Lucia Renikoff, 5'6", sophomore guard. Number 23, Chase Coley, 6'3", junior forward. Number 24, Megan Lucas, 5'11", senior forward. And number 40, Maddie Downing, 5'10", senior forward. And the key matchup, as we mentioned, is going to be Lachey Holt versus Chase Coley. And take a look at this. Chase Coley on the season, 22.1 points per game, 17.3 rebounds per game, and 9.1 blocks per game. Lachey Holt, equally impressive, 27.1 points per game, 11.7 rebounds per game, which oddly is not in the top 10 in the state in that category, but she does lead the state in steals, as we talked about in the open, 8.9 a game. 
Impressive statistics to be sure, Mike, uh, on both fronts. You know, I take a look at this Washburn Miller roster, and you take a close look at it. It's, it's really a very interesting, a very nice blend of youth and experience. You have on this Miller roster, you have six seniors, four juniors, four sophomores, and one freshman. I think that's a very unique blend, and I think it's created got some nice chemistry on there. You got the young players learning from the seniors, and I think it makes for a very good mix. And support will be key, I imagine, for a contest like this. And for Humboldt, it may come from Daniel Hernandez. She's coming back, missed five games because of an ankle sprain, averages 12.7 points per game. For Washburn, Audrey Devon's the only other double-digit scorer, averaging 10 points per game. So it may come down to who can chip in more to take pressure off. Coley and Holt. I think it's going to be very important for Humble here, Mike, being in a relatively hostile environment to get off a good start here, not fall behind early. And only fitting that Coley and Holt tip off against each other. Washburn wearing the blue, Humboldt wearing the white, and you saw the formation uh, with the height advantage Coley has, Washburn easily wins the tip. This is Lucy Renikoff. She plays some JV time, but strong point guard in the words of Tyler Coley, the head coach over at Washburn. Shot no good from Devon. Rebound by Shea Shea Akis. Akis. Brings some speed to the Humboldt lineup. Doesn't start normally. Actually, she does start. <laughs> I'm getting her mixed up with some other players. Selena Seals does not start normally, but again, filling in for the ill. Hernandez missing the three. Hip filling in for the ill Haley Green. Chase Coley with the rebound. Finding her target, Maddie Downing, too strong on the layup attempt, picked up by Seals. As we mentioned in the open, this game has major section implications. QRF rankings right now have Washburn number one in the section in class 2A, Miniha Academy number two, and Humboldt number three. Of yep. course, rankings are only rankings, but when section play starts, wow. Megan Lucas missed a bunny, and then Devon couldn't follow through, and Washburn commits the foul on top of it. Well, three opportunities right from the get-go, and Washburn can't capitalize here, Mike. The foul is on Megan Lucas. Washburn wants that possession back. A few uh, early game jitters, perhaps. Well, when you have a game with section implications, it's different than your standard non-conference yep. game like with Central and Eden Prairie. Because whoever wins this game, especially if the teams have identical records, they've come in with nearly matching marks. Hernandez missing the bunny, picked up by Coley. Great pass inside, though. If these two teams have identical records, that may have some influence on the seating. We're going to have a foul. Of course, at the later rounds of section play, you play a neutral site court, so you don't have an advantage per se, but it, seating is key because of the potential matchups, yep, and exactly, it, it's exactly. not as common in section play, but it is possible to get those upsets. The foul is on Castillo, and we have more fouls than points right now. Chase Coley changes that with a play inside. That's 6-3 frame to her advantage getting inside there. And an accurate field goal shooter, 48.6% coming into this game. Here's Holt, keep an eye on her. Going perimeter ball, but comes up short and Chase Coley uses the 6-3 frame to bounce it off Castillo to maintain possession. Good heads up play by the junior. Coley, only a junior, Mike. And has some athletic lineage in her family. Her yeah. mother played for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Moved to South Dakota to finish out her college career, but was a runner-up for Miss Basketball at St. Charles in 1981. Wow. Lucas, no good. Holt with the rebound. They expect Holt to get a double-double. She has posted one in every game this season and has seven triple-doubles on top of that. She will get her points, gets the kiss off the glass. It's just a matter of how well you can contain her, but even the top teams have had a hard time stopping Holt completely. 
New player in for Washburn, and she drains the mid-range J. That's number four, Elizabeth Peterson. A 5'9 senior forward. That's going to go on Coley, I believe. Let's see here. Cough, Mike. Akis finds Seals, gets the bounce. Good recognition on that pass there. That's got to be, be key for Humboldt. Tied up at four in the early minutes of the first half. And an, wow, a backcourt violation. I didn't see it, but certainly unusual to get a backcourt violation. My guess is a Washburn player passed back behind the line. Akis is blocked. That may have been Coley from behind. It's rare enough to get, you know, double doubles or to average one throughout the season. And Coley disrupts the pass and the steal goes to Devon. Now she finds Coley. And Coley weaves through traffic, wow. scoring. Just shows you what a dominant player she truly is, Mike. I asked head coach Tyler Coley where she got her height from and he said, uh, <laughs> Coley's mother's 6'3", so although Tyler is uh, Certainly not short in stature himself. No. Seals guarded by Devon. Hernandez thought about a three. Drives instead and will draw the foul on Renikov. And it's a shooting foul, so free throws coming for the senior. Smart decision there by Hernandez. Thought about the jumper and then saw that she had an opening and took it and draw the foul. And she's got the line. Hernandez, a 53% free throw shooter. And for once, it didn't jinx him. It was a running joke at Lynx games in previous years. Every time I bring up a free throw stat, that player would miss. High arcing, but she makes both. And we're knotted up at six with 14.04 left in the first half. Devon. Evading defenders. Lost it off the leg. And that was set up by Lachey Holt. Holt got the poke, and it went off of Devon's knee. Again, that's the defensive tenacity of Holt that's able to irritate her opponents. And we saw her do that at will against St. Croix Prep when she posted one of her triple doubles. Humble was up 49-4 to at halftime. Wow. And I spoke with Paul Richardson, the Humboldt head coach. He said he's not afraid to let Lachey Holt run a little point guard time, as that's what she did in AAU and helped diversify her skill set. Akis, no foul, offensive rebound, Holt, no good. Fought Coley off for it and scores. Wow. Holt shorter than Coley by five inches, but. Not afraid at all to get on the boards and get rebounds. Holt is not timid at all. Coley, short on the three, rebound seals. Akis, can she get by Coley? No way. 5-3 Akis against 6-3 Coley. Mismatch You're there. not gonna win too many of those battles. And Coley has a couple of blocks already. Akis, I think, seeing that she could possibly draw the foul and get to fouls early. When you give up a foot, though, against your defender, yeah, it's gonna be hard to hard. draw the foul. Here's a steal. Megan Lucas with the strip, open look. Goodbye. That's her first field goal. And we're tied at eight. Early minutes of this game playing out exactly as we would expect against two very close teams. And Minnehaha Academy is not far off from these two. They have a better record, but all three teams are about the same level. Yep. The top of that section could be very, very fun tough. to watch. We'll talk more about that, of course, as the game goes on. Holt, turnaround, no good. And Luke, or that was... Peterson getting the offensive board. Lucas, long two, in and out. Offensive rebound, Coley can't draw the foul, but gets the put back. Coley up to six. 
And you can bet that head coach Paul Richard Richardson is going to be stressing boxing out. Sierra Mendez in the game for Humboldt. If you're wondering about the roster makeup of Humboldt's team, hold for three. Short, Akis offensive rebound, no. Picked up by Renikoff. Renikoff evades the poke check. Finds Devon, launches the three. No. Coley, well, didn't quite get the board, but it goes to her teammate, and she can't finish. Now Coley will get a try, and the fourth time is the charm. Paul Richardson wants a timeout to talk about things. Washburn up 12-8. They have scored the last six points, and we talked about just how tough this section could be in Class 2A. And let's take a look. Well, that's Section 4. Humboldt wasn't even listed as one of the contenders at the start of the season, yeah. at least from the breakdown, but they play in Section 4 2A. Minnehaha Academy, you've got Washburn, and Brody. Humboldt has done quite well against some of their other opponents, yep. but any of those three teams, I think, would have a legitimate chance at making state. Now, I, I can't say it, speak for Minnehaha Academy yet. I haven't seen them play, but those three could be in a tough fight to win that state tournament berth. Uh, and again, as we mentioned at the top, uh, Washburn, of course, did get to the section final last year losing. But, you know, I think just getting there, getting to that point gives them a lot of confidence this year. And I, as I mentioned, you look at this roster, they've got a nice blend of experience and youth. And they're hungry enough, Mike. They, they've had a taste of success. And now they want to see if they can take it to the next level. And Coley, a big reason for their early success. One of her favorite traits is getting her hair done by everyone. I would like to know what everyone is. Probably everyone. Certainly well, that's what I mean. What define everyone? Your teammates, the entire school, the city, the state? You're nitpicking too much, Mike. Well, depending on how she does, we may talk to her and find out who she means by everyone. Humboldt launching a three no good from number five. And oh boy. Fight for the rebound, and drawing the foul is number 45 for Washburn, so we're going to have to fill in some names here. Number five for Humboldt is Alicia Deloy. Diminutive five for Junior. And the foul is on number three, Akis. That is her first. Number 45 for Washburn is Natalie Holdall. It is conceivable these two teams would meet again later in the season because Minneapolis and St. Paul host the Twin Cities series every year, but yep. Humboldt would need Central to drop a few games in the conference. That doesn't look likely. And Washburn in position, it looks like, to take a Minneapolis City Conference title. Last year that went to Roosevelt and Highland Park. Holdall for three. Off the mark. Picked up by Hernandez. And one of our Tony references, I'm sure he'll, his name will come up a few times tonight, told me... Uh, it was a very entertaining foul fest last year between Highland and Roosevelt for that Twin Cities title. Well, he's got the best seat in the house tonight for sure. Well, I'm sure he'll be grilling me the next time I meet him in whatever plane of existence because I broke several of his rules today. And I'm wondering if we'll see the cardinal rule he had for basketball. Yeah. Well, we'll bring it up if it comes up but we'll let you sit on it for a while. We've talked about it before, of course. Humboldt showing good patience here, Mike. And Washburn showing good defense, playing a little zone here, and they're not giving any looks to Humboldt, suspecting well, they're, they're not strong perimeter well, shooters. Well, Humboldt is taking what the defense is giving them right now. And right now, it's There's not much. Down only four. And the defense will give them a five-second violation. And Washburn did a good job. They had Humboldt pinned well back from the key. Washburn, of course, having success with their boys team in the last few years. They won the 2009 Class 3 state championship. We've got a foul, so no steal for Humboldt. And... They came within eight seconds of winning a second title, but De La Salle and that memorable buzzer beater from Ross Barker, who I found out can no longer play in athletics because of a heart condition. Wow. He enrolled at Wisconsin, but uh, his athletic career is over, but he gave De La Salle perhaps one of their best moments in athletic history. 
I still have chills with that game. Coley with the hook. And she's the first player to break double digits. I've got a feeling a few colleges will be taking a look at her next year. Absolutely. If they haven't already. Sales for three, that's short, but it falls right into Hernandez's hand. So no, that was Castillo, but she missed the bunny anyway. Coley picks it up. She's got numbers, and she'll just weave around Mendez. Mendez was no match. 16 to eight now. Humboldt's got to be careful, not let that thing get away early on him. Washburn has scored the last 10 points unanswered. Hernandez guarded by Coley, and Coley's got some long arms. Reminds me a little of Shade Chapman over at St. Paul Central. And of course, folks like Brittany Griner and Delisha Milton Jones. Castillo draws the foul, will shoot a pair. And Humboldt hasn't scored, I don't think. Since they were last at the free throw line, yeah. and Lachey hold out, she's going to come back in. She'll take periodic breaks because, as Richardson told me, Holt is so energetic and so aggressive, she'll wear herself out. She's always playing on every play, does not take a breathe breather. Castillo, 57% free throw shooter, but she hasn't shot many attempts. But she gets on the board here, and that ends the 10-point streak from Washburn. Well, keep an eye on that. Holt back in the lineup. Let's see if that changes Humboldt's fortunes. It was 16-8 before she was subbed in. Castillo splits. Washburn possession. Holt oh, almost got that. Great hustle. Holt is quick. I know her supporters are looking to try to get her in a D1 or a D2. She's had a few D3 schools looking at her. Coley can't get the bounce, but she decides to pad her own numbers. Maybe she scripted that. And again, if you're humble, you've got to find a way to box her out. Like we said in the keys to the game, make sure you, Washburn is held to one and done, and Coley having other ideas. 8.38 to go in the first half. And 18 to nine is the score in favor of the Millers. Holt pump fakes, kicks out to Hernandez. That was a tough shot. Coley picks it up. Here comes a fast break for Washburn. No, good defense. Renikoff couldn't finish. That was Sales on the defensive play. Holt with just four points, can add three. Coley with another rebound, and I'm sure she'll have a double-double before the half is out. No assist there. And once again, offensive rebounding, but this time Washburn couldn't finish out. Another bullet dodge. And Humboldt, they have a smaller lineup. They've had historically smaller teams over the years, and so that's something they're going to have to work around. Holt can't get the turnaround, and there's Coley with another rebound. Holt just does, or Humboldt does not have the height to match up with Washburn, especially with Coley at center. Steal here. That's Sierra Mendez, but she's got Coley breathing down. Holt, look at that, she faked the bounce pass, but she had a double team. Not much you could do there. Here is Peterson, finding Coley, 14-footer, off the heel, rebound, Hernandez. 7-10 left in the first half. Nice athletic move by Coley. Yeah. She could have let it go. Yep. But Castillo's bad pass results in a turnover. Well, Steele's always more dramatic than just a dead ball rebound, right? Rekhoff was hanging on down there in the left corner all alone. Coley's down there. Finds Peterson, she'll try. No good. Holt fights Coley off for the rebound. Wasn't gonna let her get in that time. Humboldt dropped a few games without Daniel Hernandez, including uh, losses to Johnson and inexplicably Highland Park. A team that was winless until that matchup and a team I had seen in the Richfield Holiday Classic in 
I have to agree with Paul Richardson. Holt loses the ball, but that was not a game Humboldt should have dropped. Yeah. Losses like that can prove costly in the long run. Well, they're in different classes, so not a lot at stake there, but it may have cost Humboldt a chance at a St. Paul City Conference title and a Twin Cities berth. The Dallas Stolen away. That was a Dallas Riley season in the game for Washburn. So was number 32. We haven't had too many fouls. Aaron Bolton in the game for the Millers. Great steal by Akis, the 5-3 sophomore. And Deloy back in for the Hawks. Also on the floor, number 41, Keandra Stokes. The foul is on Bolden, but neither team in the penalty yet. Akis losing the handle. Oh. Draws the foul, and Megan Lucas bailed her out. Great improvisation by Akis on that one. Looked like she had totally lost control on that. Somehow managed to get the ball up. Do the foul and now it's at the line. Put some points on the board. Just a 48% free throw shooter, Akis averaging 10.7 points this season. Also gets in uh, 2.6 steals a game, but could use a little work on her assist to turnover ratio. And we've been stuck at 18-9 for a while. I thought this game would be a higher scoring affair, but not a lot of points. Is neither team really able to find their groove from the floor? Coley, the one exception. Peterson, swish. Good touch from the left baseline there. And we forgot to mention with Chase Coley as Humboldt having some, there we go. By the way, Coley averaging 4.9 assists per game. As if she wasn't doing enough on the stat sheet. Holt draws the bump and Washburn in the penalty. Holt with just four points and figuring if I can't score with the field goal shot, this is one way to do it. Well, sometimes, you know, in, in these type of situations, Mike, you have to find a way just to do whatever you can do to get yourself back in the game. Only, down only 10 here, the 521 left on this first half. If you can get to the line, you can make, uh, make up a lot of points that way. Lachey Holt and her teammate Daniel Hernandez already taking college court. Holt well, missing the front end of a one-on-one, -on -one, so an empty possession. You've got to make those free throws. Bad pass by Washburn, and it's picked off by Lachey Holt, the state leader in steals. Holt against Coley. Too strong. Hernandez. Will they count the basket? I don't. I think that was before. It was close, but I think you're right. Yes, the foul was before the shot. So Hernandez, Hernandez using that strong 5-8 frame of hers to get down low and grab the rebound and get fouled. Another empty possession for Humboldt, though, and those Washburn throws, caught a break. Those missed free throws really hurt, Mike. Still early, but you're right. I mean, it's 2010 with five minutes to go in the first half. Chase Coley left alone, and she throws a little <laughs> underhand move. Misjudged the inside pass there. Coley is outscoring the entire humble team. Deloy finding Akis. Once again, Akis defended by Coley. That's not going to end up well for Humboldt. Launching the three. No good. Rebound, Devon. That was Riley on the attempt. Now Devon will try from the left corner. Oh, Bullseye. Wow. That's her first field goal. And Beautiful Richardson will call another timeout. Beautiful three by Devon on that one from the left corner. Washburn on a 19-2 run. And Tony Gears alma mater demonstrating their abilities as of now. Yeah, they sure are. This is going to be this, these last four minutes and 23 seconds here in this first half. It'll be very critical, I think, for Washburn to see if they can find a way to whittle this thing down, see if they can get it down to like nine, eight points, a little more manageable deficit. You don't want to go down double digits in the lock in the half. Still a lot of time to pull back, but it was close for the first few minutes, and yeah. Washburn just utilizing their 
height advantage, strong defense, well, and Humboldt not finding any open looks. And I think two of the empty positions that Humboldt had here in the last few minutes, Mike, you will miss free throws, those are costly. Humboldt's gonna have to change their fortunes. And it doesn't help that their top player at the moment is struggling. Hernandez, the inbound pass is intercepted. Washburn can extend the run here. And they will. Riley on the board. Akis, bounce pass over to Stokes, rejected by who else? Chase Coley. And Tyler Coley spoke of Chase and what has led to her meteoric rise in the category races this year in the stat sheet. Just a high IQ and fundamentally sound. Yep. Will not rush a play. And he said he got that from... Oh, she got that. Oh, my. Seals missing the three-pointer. High recoil, though. Ball still live. And Holt wins the battle. Finds Hernandez. Her three's no good. Coley with the rebound. Devon evades the poke. Oh, beautiful transition by Washburn on that one, Mike. That play needed no words. Renikoff scoring. That was just what you call being in rhythm. And the run is now 23 to two and it could go even higher. Goodbye, Renikoff again. And another timeout by Paul Richardson with three minutes to go, Washburn out of their rut, and they have pulled away to a 21-point lead. Just like that, the game seemingly got out of hand here, and uh, the turnovers really hurt the Hawks here in the last couple of minutes. And I spoke with Paul Richardson before the game. He talked about how influential they were in their loss to Central, who has one of their stronger teams in several years. Humble committed 22 turnovers in one half. Had six against Heritage Christian, not as strong of an opponent. But that shows you, you lose the ball, you're going to give up a lot of yeah. fast break looks. Yep, yep. And right about now, Tony Gear would have thrown in a Rockford reference at me. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of his favorite uh, nicknames for me when I would point out something that would seem obvious to basketball yeah. fans. Uh, I would be Christian Jim Rockford in an homage to the Rockford Files. I, f I fell victim to that a few times as well, Mike. And he was well known here, the principal. I talked with her for a little bit. She knew of him. And we will push forward, of course, and that's not the only way Humboldt's found any scoring opportunities is drawing fouls. That will send Akis back to the charity stripe. Miles on Peterson, her second personal. Earlier this season, Humboldt hosted a charity event where they the entire team shot 100 free throws wow. to promote local charities. Akis makes both free throws here. Ooh. That was close to a double dribble. Yeah, very close. Riley can't hit the three-pointer. Holt with the rebound. Transition it's about the one opportunity here for the Hawks. And Devon with the deflection. It will stay with Humble, but Washburn two on target for Humble to maneuver around. 239 left in the first half. There's a player who has not found many openings yet, and her teammates have not done much to draw attention off Holt. 
Castillo's shot was deflected. And here's Devon, another fast break score for Washburn. Oh, I thought it was going in, but Devon, once again, if there's one fault for Washburn, that was it, a microcosm. Well, we saw that early on. We had uh, two or three missed easy opportunities. Now this last one. So Akis will go back to the line for another pair. Double bonus now for Humboldt. And another missed free throw. Officials having to remind the players that it's 10 fouls. So we shoot two now. Those, well, missed, those missed free throws, I, 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 I can't emphasize enough how important free throws are. You just have to make free throws, especially when you're down and you're trying to come back. You just have to make free throws. And then another missed one. And free throws in high school, it's not as automatic as it might be in the college and the pros. As you, the players are still developing, and yeah. free throws aren't the flashiest skill to have. And so you don't see as many accurate shooters from the free throw line. Coley got bumped. They don't call a foul. Rebound Hernandez. One of the few things to go wrong for Coley, I guess. He's had an otherwise impressive first half. Sales guarded by Bolden, and did Humboldt draw another foul? No, it's good. No, and Humboldt called for an offensive foul. Yeah. A block away from the ball on Castillo with 154 left. Speaking of charity events, the Washburn team will run a babysitting service. <laughs> and Chase Coley certainly babysitting the rim. The babysitting service is called Hooping Honeys. It's a basketball clinic. They hosted that around the holiday season. And it was a way for parents to drop their kids off. That's well, if Holt can't get points the old-fashioned way, you can get them through assists. She finds Akis, who gets her first field Ooh, goal. She and stepped over the line on that in inbounds pass. An unfortunate miscue. You don't see that happen very often. I don't think that was one of Tony Gear's cardinal rules, but that's got to be close. Akis on the runner. Didn't have much there. Rebound, Downing. So that basketball clinic I was talking about, it allows the parents around the area to drop off their kids so they can do their Christmas shopping, or did. No three-pointer. And it deflection off Coley. I thought it went off Humboldt, but yeah, I, I thought we're up Hern here. I thought Hernandez uh, had tipped that ball out, but the referee saw it differently. But a creative babysitting idea, though. You know, have the kids dropped off and while the parents go shopping, the kids get to participate in a basketball clinic. Well, and you know, I think that's just great. You know, it just shows you how big this, uh, how big that program is and, and what a great community outreach it is as well. 42 seconds. Holt. Whoa, what a tough shot. That was close and Seals just stopped herself in time. You couldn't get much closer. Humboldt may hold for the final shot. No, Akis will launch a three. Bullseye! That's a big left going into the locker room at halftime. I didn't expect Akis to be the leading scorer for Humboldt at the end of the first half, but Holt has been shut down. Washburn can't get one more shot up. They will not. Hernandez with the steal. See if they can hold here for one more, well, six seconds. They better hurry. Holt's going to get rid of it and will not. That brings us to halftime intermission with a score 33-17 in favor of Washburn, but a badly needed three-pointer by Humboldt. They still have a lot of work to do, but right now Washburn is asserting their dominance thanks to their six-foot three-inch oh, anchor. Yeah. And, and, and again, the turnovers that we saw here in this first half really put uh, Humboldt in a bad position. And they got on that critical 10-0 run uh, Washburn did, and that really changed the whole complexion of the ball game right there. 
We'll pause for a few minutes and review the first half numbers, which are heavily one-sided at this point. And come back, you're watching high school girls basketball here on TSB Television. Welcome back to Minneapolis Washburn High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of high school girls basketball. Mike Peden here with Alex Nagel. We have the Washburn Millers leading the Humboldt Hawks 33-17 to and recapping the first half numbers. Chase Coley still outscoring the entire Humboldt roster. She has 18 points already. And that's about it for notables. Humboldt's leading scored. Shea Shea Akis with eight. Lachey Holt held to four points thanks to a lot of double and triple teams from Washburn. That's really taken its toll on this humble team here this evening, Mike. If you're curious, Chase Coley's season high is 33, and depending on how the second half shakes up, because Humboldt's still not out of this. Down 16 points, let's see if they can get off to a good start here. Well, Lachey Holt's gonna need to get going. Find a way around these double and triple teams, because I see you're taking a lot of fadeaways hooks against a lot of coverage, that's tough to do. Good block, but Holt picks it up, and that's what she needs. Yep. A good open look down low, and let's see if that changes her fortune. Ooh, and almost a steal by. During the halftime, I spoke with Minnehaha head coach Josh Thoreau, missing the jumper downing, fight for the rebound, and look who it is, it's Lachey Holt. She has a one-on-one, -on -one, backs off, Right idea, I can't finish. Again, that was the right idea, but again, a tough angle when you're off balance like that. Yep. No matter how close you are to the basket. There's a steal, it's Lachey Holt again. Wake has got a hand in on that one. And Holt drawing the foul. Well, Holt certainly coming out with an energetic performance here to start. And uh, Duro, his top player, Nicole Nipper, 995 points coming in. They played Mounds Park tonight, Minnehaha did. It was an easy 69-35 win. Nipper hit a three, and Thoreau took her out so she could score 1,000 at home. Hernandez can't score three here. Minnehaha playing tomorrow, actually playing three games in three nights, so Nipper getting some well-earned rest at this stage of the season, and Minnehaha doing well. We mentioned it's gonna be a tough fight to get to state between those teams. Minnehaha's been in there for the last few years running and Humboldt and Washburn would like to change that trend. Jump ball, possession arrow favoring the Millers. Another lost chance here for Humboldt. But I like their attitude. They are not, yeah. Yeah, exactly. they're not discouraged, yep. but they leave Chase Coley open. And so she'll do a quick skip pass over to Peterson and wow. Humboldt got caught falling asleep there. And that and that's what you like, you know, from an experienced player like like Cole. I mean, she can not only score, but she has great recognition. You know, she could have taken that in, but saw Peterson open, dished the ball off to her, and then got an easy two. Ooh, dangerous pass there, Mike. Nearly a backcourt violation. Akis in trouble. That's a traveling violation. Kind of got into no man's land there. Didn't know what to do. And Coley wasn't too shabby last year, averaging 18 points and 13 no. rebounds a game. <laughs> Could you imagine what her senior season would be like? Oh. Peterson shot can't go in. Seals with the rebound, and Humble getting some opportunities here, just not finding points yet. 35-19 in favor of the Millers. Yeah, Coley reminds me of another Shade Chapman, and if Washburn can hang on and win the Minneapolis City Conference, that would be a lot of fun too. Chapman, college bound, headed to UAB. We see Humboldt more aggressive on the O-boards, wow. and now it's paying off. Lachey yeah. Holt with the rebound and the putback. And falling down as well, doing it. Humboldt finding ways to get around their height disadvantage. Coley losing the handle, and that was almost intercepted. Wow. Three-pointer by Renikoff. She's come up with some, some shots tonight, especially when you least expect it. Tyler Coley describes Renikoff as thinking she's Steve Nash. <laughs> Not a bad person to emulate. 80% 
shooter in the last two games. You know, very accurate. Didn't have a lot of shots, of course. Coley is the primary anchor on offense, but always good to have an accurate supporter. Chase Coley missing the mid-range J. Holt with another rebound, and it's going to be fun to see what those totals are. Again, Holt not in the top ten in the state for rebounds, but she is averaging a double-double, and she draws another foul. I think that's going to go on number 40, Maddie Downing. Well, I was wrong. Won't be the first time, won't be the last, right? No. Hernandez to inbound. And Akis. Here's Holt again. There's the hook. Traveling violation. But that's what got her into trouble, trying those hook shots in coverage. And doing it in a lot of traffic as well, Mike. And that Washburn will take that all day. Yep. Hold all back in the game for the Millers. Here's another steal from Humboldt. Washburn getting a little sloppy here with ball control in the second well, half. Akis making some things happen defensively here, Mike. And Lachey Holt gets two chances there. Three offensive re or three tries overall, and Holt finally cracks double figures, so that double-double streak will be safe for another game. Downing, no. Coley offensive rebound. But she'll get a pair. Well, again, great recognition by Coley coming down on that one. She could have taken it in, but saw her open, dished it off. And she still gets to the line anyway. Coley, a 58% free throw shooter. But that's not uncommon for Post to not to have that strong of a free throw shot. Because they're trained to swat the ball and, yeah. Yeah. and get it off quickly not necessarily working on the shooting arc that you'll see guards do. But still long, tall, athletic. And up to 20 points now. And a good touch from the charity stripe as well. And that makes my entire discussion about free throws a moot point. Holt gets it across the timeline. Pulls up. Short. Coley with another rebound. Coley, top of the key. Going to Downing. Hold all. Left alone in the corner. Off the mark. Or maybe they scripted that up. <laughs> maybe they set that up. For Hold all intentionally missed the three pointer so Coley could rush in there and do yeah. her thing. <laughs> She'll get a three point play try here. Paul Richardson seeking an explanation on that foul there. Again, it just comes down to boxing out there, Mike, and, and Humble not getting that done. And when you have a long wingspan well, yeah, and the height that Coley that does, much, makes it that much more difficult. All you have to do is stretch your arms out and a steal off the inbound. Now Peterson, too strong, and Coley almost got another O board. Aikis some trouble here. Humboldt with some sloppy play in these last couple of inbounds. Washburn running full court. Deloy almost got the kiss off the glass. And the ball bounced off Coley, so a dead ball rebound to Humboldt. Aikis. Wow. Lachey Holt came, came out, out of nowhere. nowhere. That's what I <laughs> And a double dribble violation nullifies that play, but I don't know where she was from, but. Yeah, she just like bolted out of a cannon, it seemed like. And she'll give you that intensity every play. Holdall will try again. Still not on hitting the mark. Offensive rebound. Peterson, that's a long two, swish. Peterson up to eight points, 45-23. Washburn over Humboldt. 
Uh-oh, and another steal. Akis walked into a double team. Coley, goodbye. She had a little more vertical. She could have emulated Brittany Griner. Yeah, that lead now up to 24. And a timeout here. Humboldt calling another timeout. They have two remaining, but Chase Coley doing what she wants to. And getting help from the unfettered at as well. Unfettered at all. Taking a look at that breakdown Wash book. <laughs> that uh, Washburn staff, of course, head coach Tyler Coley, assisted by Keith Wilson and Liz Shea. Washburn staying out and also played at Gustavus as well, Mike. And a little more on Coley. She likes to play basketball because it's competitive. She plays with and against her friends. Of course, a lot of players know each other through high school and AAU play. So you, it's kind of like the WNBA, how a lot of players yep. know each other because they may play for or against each other overseas. Yep. Also takes part in volleyball and lacrosse. So maybe she'll be at the uh, Minnesota Swarm game tomorrow night. They have their home <laughs> opener. They actually play a game tonight against Toronto, and then they return home to play Edmonton. Humboldt. Full court defense produces a turnover, and another two points off of it. This time Audrey Devon with the honors. And that tip ball by Coley started it all. Well, the full court defense set it up. Humboldt doesn't have the speed to break it. Nope. Hernandez, runner, no good. And Akis beat Coley for the rebound, saves it. Mendez with the rainbow arc. That doesn't happen often. It's for Coley, I can't imagine. <laughs> Peterson finds Coley. Not a strong three-point shooter, so she'll feed to Holdall instead. Devon, just inside the arc, short. Holdall, all board, off the mark. Gets another one, and Washburn, very fluent in offensive rebounds yeah, tonight. They really are. And if they're not, Lachey Hull gets called for the reach, and that will be a third. You know, what, again, what I like about Coley so much is that she can do so much with the ball. But what I also like is that she's got incredibly great recognition, finds her open teammates, know who's, who to get the, she knows how to get the ball to her teammates, just like that. And one, Natalie Holdall with her first field goal. Well, she does lead the team in assists at 4.9, but because she leads the state in several other categories and has 22 points to boot on average, you don't examine her ball distribution no. abilities as much. I'm sure a lot of high school beat reporters gravitate towards the blocks, the scoring, oh, the sure, rebounds. Sure. But Coley does have some guard skills, yep. even though she plays a, more of a forward. If she can develop that, especially next year, that's the scary part. She has another year with this team. Yeah. She could be a very effective wing in college. Mm -hmm. I could see her playing the four. But she could probably slide over to the three. 52-25. We are getting close to mercy rule range here. Lachey Holt draws the foul. And that was all Lachey Holt there recovering from the near steal and making something out of nothing. And we'll get her to the free throw line. This is her first attempt. We well, you know, as you pointed out, Mike Humble did a good job early on coming out with a lot of energy. Second trip, I should say. A lot of intensity, and they did get that lead little down to 14, but just like that, it ballooned up again. Hold, 60% free throw shooter on the season. We mentioned 27.1 points per game. That average might drop a bit. She is fifth in the state scoring race. Tia Albert leading all players, and not far behind her is Rebecca Dahlman, who continues to annex that all-time record for most career points. Riley with the mid-range J. I've said this, Dahlman, if she gets enough 
games in this year could be the first 5,000 point score we've seen. He already is the first 4,000 point score. Hold all with the steal, and I don't know what Coley's numbers are like, but I'm sure she'll get a few milestones in before her high school career wraps up. Akis steals it back. 54 26 to score with 10 28 to play in regulation. Humboldt nearly losing the ball. They're pinned. Holt gives them an escape route. Akis on the deflection. And an over the back call on Hernandez. Coley sharing a word with the official. And we're seeing every facet Tyler Coley described to me in the pregame chat I had with him earlier this evening. As another offensive putback, hold all scoring. He called this team very quick, agile and Coley's presence inside can wipe out opportunities in the paint. Akis drawing the foul. Hold all getting uh, some good time in here tonight. 5'10 junior, very strong inside with that rebound as we just saw. And Washburn five points away from bringing the mercy rule into play here. We're getting close to that mark. Shooting foul, so free throws coming for Humble. Alicia Deloy. 9.45 left at the nine minute mark. If Washburn goes up by 35 or more, or any point after that, we will use running time. Deloy at the line, this is her first trip, averaging just 1.3 points per game. Not very active on the stat sheet, but usually a deep reserve. Castillo and Stokes going back in, Holt going to take a rest, and Looks like this game is out of reach for Humboldt now. Chase Coley going to take a seat. Washburn with only four players on the floor. No, they got five. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, they only have four. That is very strong. Deloy scored, and so yeah, Washburn's going to have to play some four on five, and they get three points. Redikoff. Not scared at wow. all. Now they get well, their fifth well, player maybe in. Well, Lucas came in off the bench. I think there was obviously some confusion there well, on the Washington. Renikoff bench. certainly didn't mind. I think she wants a little more four on five. And Sales with the response, with the, getting a tray from the right wing. That was straight. I have never seen that before. Ever. When you do this long enough, you start seeing a lot of things. And Humboldt with a chance for a fast break here. Castillo. Launches the long two, in and out. Sales, showing a little Lachey Holt moves there, getting the put back basket, and she's up to seven points, 59-32. We're seeing a little more spirit out of Humboldt after Holt was taken out of the lineup. And Renikoff also demonstrating her abilities with Coley taking a rest. Renikoff up to 12. And it's nice to see some of these other players stepping up. Yeah, it is. Steal by Lucas. Bouncing over to Renikoff. Fade away. Can't get the bounce. I would have walked out of the building if that had gone in. <laughs> and that's not a knack on Renikoff. She's been doing very well, but getting a little luck to go her way too. Humboldt losing the ball with 8.10 left. We are not at Mercy Rule range yet. But Tyler Coley, believing his team is at the point now where he doesn't have to keep his starters out there, or keep his star players out there longer than they have to. Peterson. Over to Downing. And this will give the other Washburn players a chance to get themselves on the board. And Coley not a selfish player. She was just the only one in rhythm, yeah, for yeah. especially in the first half. Deloy with a bounce pass that was easily picked off by Peterson. Holdall 
Back to Peterson. Three-pointer off the heel. Stokes with the rebound. Not quite the cardinal rule. <laughs> For those of you wondering, the cardinal rule that Tony had in basketball was never pass to your coach. And the second cardinal rule was never pass to the opposing coach. And number three was an official. Bolden back in the game for the Millers, and with a 15-foot drain is Riley, 63-32. Nice, turn nice turnaround jumper there. Sales, stops, pops, too strong. And Devon with the fast break, finds Peterson. Wow. And That's another layup. How many times have we seen a fast break layup tonight from Washburn? Oh. Don't have enough fingers on my hand to count here, Mike. Well, we may get another one. You may need to find a calculator of some sort. Well, not quite. So Devon will get a pair. And on the season, Devon, 67% free throw shooter. 5'9", senior. Looks taller than 5'9". Certainly plays taller than 5'9". And that would be the opposite of what we usually see in high school basketball where players get a few more inches than they yeah. should. Devon averaging 3.6 steals a game. And we should mention Holt leading the state in steals, but Coley not too bad herself, 5.1 a game. Definitely player of the game honors here. I mean, without her contributions, Washburn would not be a contender for state tournament berth. Akis, no good. Holt with the rebound. And she's back in and gets another put back. And good to see her getting a little more action here in the final few minutes. And even though Washburn has dominated this game and will come out with the win, well, Humboldt's recent issues continue. They've lo they'll lose five of their last seven after this. This does not necessarily indicate that Washburn will waltz in in section play. We've seen it happen before with teams playing each other multiple times. Holt missing the long two. Akis gets the cleanup. Well, I keep thinking about St. Paul Central and Minneapolis South. That rivalry. Yeah, that rivalry. And that's another Tony Gear story. <laughs> I think he was <laughs> one is. of the proponents saying a team would not win three times in that series. South won the first two, and so that implied Central will win the final game. Everyone thought he was off base. Central wins, and Tony took a lot of pride in that. Yep. Remember that? I remember that well. Of course, I got it back the following year when he thought Minneapolis North would take the 3A title, and St. Michael Albertville yep. uh, proved him wrong. That was one of the great things about him. At the line is Riley. She'll pad her numbers here. You know, I, I think, you know, again, when you look at this Washburn team, you know, the fact that they got to the section final last year, I think it's a huge plus for them. You know, they've got the experience of getting there. Now it's just getting over that proverbial hump. Minnehaha Academy will likely be an obstacle. Hernandez, that was a late foul, but she'll get free throws, and we're still at that fringe, but not yet in Mercy Rule territory, but it's good to see Humble getting some plays in. I would be shocked to not see Washburn win the conference title. And Minneapolis will host this year's Twin Cities matchup, so it could easily come back yeah. here. And we yeah. could, and it's possible we could have, for the first time in a long time, a Twin Cities series played in one location. Yeah. If the Washburn boys team still a strong squad. Lachey Holt, no foul called. Still playing hard. She's not going to give up no matter what oh, the no. score is. And whoever gets her, whether it's a Mayak school, whether it's D2, D1, they're going to like the work ethic of Lachey Holt. Oh. 
without question. She struggled tonight, but that's in part because of the stingy. Oh, there's a mid-range swish. We don't see that often from her, but Holt will sometimes go to the perimeter. I can think of a lot of my ex-schools right now that would just salivate at the mere thought of having her on their squad. Bolden, bullseye. Matt will get her on tomorrow's paper. 70 to 40 to score. As again, she had a stingy defense that held her to four points in the first half, but she's rebounded nicely in this half, up to 17. I'm sure she'd like the win, but Holt has really fascinated me this season with the maturity as she has demonstrated. Showing a lot more control with ball handling, taking some smarter shots. And there's an and one. And as we said tonight, had four points and humble with every reason to just bow out and go home, but yeah. they are determined to not let this game go to running time, if that's any consolation. And remember, as we talked about with the section, it's possible these two teams could play again. Yep. So every chance you get to gauge your opponent, you take it. Yep, absolutely. Line change coming in for Washburn. And, you know, and another critical element to remember, Mike, is that each game is different. You know, you look at this game, you think, well, if they were to play again, it might be the same. Not necessarily. Each game is different. You know, the dynamics and the way each game flows is, is different from the last one. And one example of the Central Eden Prairie Series, they played each other a couple of times this year at the Dick's Sporting Goods Classic, what you like to call Tricky Dick's. And they had a regular season matchup against each other, St. Paul Central. Uh, didn't do so well in the first meeting, but they nearly pulled out a win over Eden Prairie in the second meeting. And if going back to that three times theory as scoring for the Millers. Hey, let me get a name on her, number 50, Olivia Downing getting on the board. 5'8 sophomore. He felt it was similar to that Central South series from a few years ago. If those teams play each other three times, you would not have the same victor all yeah. three times. Yep. Richardson will call timeout with 3.37 left. And this gives us a few uh, more chances to get in a few more notes on the teams. We mentioned Holt and Hernandez taking college courses together. And so they'll have a head start. And that is feeding off the rest of the team. And that is one of the less pleasing iterations of the Jeopardy theme I've heard. <laughs> My favorite is the 1997 cue, actually, when they redid the music the first time that went away from the synthesizers of the 80s. But this, a little too much bass for me. Give me the 97 version, or even the original 60s version, yeah, going back to go Art Fleming. <laughs> I can go for that. Well, that's what the... Remember that one as a little kid the uh, Trebek version used for all those years yep. until they renovated the theme. So back to the notes. Where was I? Yes. Uh, so the Washburn team, of course, what those of you familiar with Washburn, they were in the news last week over an effigy of a black doll hanging on a tree, hearkening back to more racist times when that was uh, symbolized with lynching and certainly not something you want to see at any school. I don't care where. And so the players texted the coach, Tyler Coley, and asked to skip practice so they could attend the meeting that was held earlier this week to show support for the community. Yep. I spoke with the athletic director, Daniel Pratty said, Washburn, they moved on, they're ready to go forward, but a great symbol of support from the Washburn Millers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In a time when, you know, yeah. such an incident like this could throw, you know, it could throw some questions well, as to I think what's going only, on I think socially. Not, I think it not only shows great team unity, but great support for the community as well. They were determined to not let one minor incident speak no. for the entire school. No. In Minneapolis, a very diverse background. You know, you have the. We had a clear path foul on Hernandez. She scored all five points from the free throw line. And so that must have been what the Jeopardy music was for. Yeah. You don't see that often in high school, but it does happen. No. And so with a clear path, as you see, it's two shots and possession of the ball. It's kind of like you know, it's basketball's version of the penalty shot rule in hockey. Yeah. Humboldt will keep possession, 332 remaining. Washburn will go to 11-4 and four in the year. Humboldt will fall to 10-10. and, Well, I should say... <laughs> 
Humboldt will fall to 10 and 5. Washburn will go up to 11 and 6. I got my numbers crossed for a little bit. Sales. No. Akis picks it up. Washburn or Humboldt will get another try. Akis has been all over the floor tonight for Humboldt. There has been some strong effort from these Humboldt players, but again, the stingy defense, the trapping, the full court, you see there, yep. even with the reserves in. Yep. Well, Chase Coley will go back out. New player in for the Millers, number 21. And that is Jazanae Patterson, a freshman. A little Always freshman on this varsity. Always good for the freshman to get some minutes. And Renikoff will play some JV time. No three-pointer. Humboldt will get the ball back here. Renikoff will play some JV time. She's a sophomore, but it's the only way Coley feels he can get her some reasonable minutes. And of course, you can do that in high school. Holt draws the foul. Both teams in the penalty now. Oh, Holt bouncing back to a respectable night. 16 points in this half. And as we've said before, any college coach watching, trying to get that last minute recruit, you will not make a mistake by getting Lachey Holt to your roster. <laughs> Her work ethic, impeccable. And I certainly hope she finds success when she graduates and takes the next stage of her career. Humboldt is going to miss a very productive player. Yep. And whatever their last game is, that's going to be a bittersweet moment. Bump foul on number 42 for the Millers. 2-10 remaining. Kenda Zellner Smith, sophomore. So that will send Deloitte to the line. Interesting style by Deloitte, how she bounces that ball at the free throw line. I've never seen anything quite like that. Well, that's the beauty of high school basketball. You get to see several styles of free throw shots. Bolden. Three pointers off the mark. Rebound Deloy. Two minutes to go. Holt out of the lineup now. We see Ravon Gentry number 11 in the game and Richardson feeling Holt has played enough and will give her some rest to Reload for the next game, and with a couple minutes left, uh, we continue our tribute. Bolden missing the three-pointer. Was there any moment with Tony Gear that stood out for you? I know you, you and he called a lot of games. Uh, you two were actually on the crew for Bethel. Yeah. Uh, Just know, recently, I mean, this year. I, th I, th I, th I tell you, there's, there's a lot of moments that stand out. The one of the more, of, I guess. Lighter moments, funnier moments. Uh, it's back at the uh, Dick's Holiday Tournament some years ago when St. Paul Central was playing. And St. Paul Central head coach Willie Taylor, Taylor, after disputing a call a bit too vociferously, was uh, subsequently tossed from the game. <laughs> and Tony uh, asked me if I could uh, go over and get uh, some quick thoughts from Willie Taylor and. <laughs> I think Tony kind of knew he was sending me into uh, <laughs> into the fire pit in, in, into the fire pit and he kind of got a good laugh out of it later <laughs> Zellner Smith fouled she'll shoot a pair but that was it was pretty fun you know it's just Tony was always fun to work with because you know he knew the game so well and could add it, those bits of humor when you least expected it you had to be prepared when you called the At game home. with Tony. Yeah, you had to be on your toes, that's for sure. Not just with the game, but with his own sense of humor. 111 left, Humboldt will get another shot here. Very distinct and unpredictable to be sure. 
The moment that stands out for me, and I talked about this in my editorial that I posted, but it's worth mentioning here for those who may not have seen it. Mendez, too strong. And no putback for number 31 on Humboldt. That is... Not sure who that is. Bolden missing the three-pointer. Really favors that. Tony was responsible for my contributions to the WNBA and the Golden Gophers. He made a gesture to get me in the press corps. And I started my WNBA coverage in 2009 and has morphed into a couple of WNBA finals appearances with the Lynx and include trip to Indianapolis. There's Zellner Smith with the score. She'll get on tomorrow's newspaper and 74-47. Ten more seconds, oh. and there's a steal and a foul on. That will get send number five to the line. Or Must number be on the JV. Number, number fifty actually at the uh, oh, 50. Downing. That's right, Downing. It looked like five for a moment. Yeah. It gives me a couple more seconds though. Well, I, and, and you know, I think about Tony and all the connections that he provided uh, me with. Well, Not, one of the mo I was going to say the best game I called with him was the community college game between Anoka Ramsey and MCTC. Yeah. I threw out the term microcosm. I had a tendency of doing that, throwing out words he wasn't quite sure of, and he went over <laughs> to you and said, "Is there a dictionary around?" <laughs> and then recently at Gophers games, I had I had stumped the players with words like cathartic and bastion, and Tony had planned on getting a Webster Dictionary to show to the players. Unfortunately, that plan will never come to fruition now, at least not from him. But Downing adding a couple more points, so that gets her on the board. One more steal for Washburn and a half-court shot. And that ends the game. 76-47, a comical way to end this game, but a dominating performance overall for Washburn, uh, it, it, thanks to Chase Coley. Yeah, it was on, on both ends of the floor. Uh, they caused a lot of turnovers, and, and you know, like I said, you know, they had that run when things were still relatively close. That changed the whole complexion of the game right there, Mike. We'll see if we can get a word with Coley and Holt, the leading scores from both teams. Coley finishing with 25, Holt with 20, and I'm sure both had double-doubles at least. So stick around. You're watching high school basketball here on TSB Television. 76-47 the final. Washburn wins. Mike Beaton here with Chase Coley of Minneapolis Washburn, 25 points tonight, and I'm sure a double-double at least, maybe a triple-double. You had quite a few blocks and really got everyone involved on Washburn, both offensively and defensively tonight. How were you able to pull it off? Um, I just make sure we work as a team, and I don't. I try not to be selfish with the ball. Like I know I already have a lot of points, and my teammates want to score too, and we all like working together as a team. Now, a lot of attention goes to your rebounding and blocking abilities. You lead the state in both categories, but you see you lead the team in assists and steals. What makes you eager to become an all-around threat in every major statistical category here? Um, I just like making sure my teammates get a chance to score a two. Um, and I don't know, like whenever I see the ball, I just kind of go for it. And I really like playing defense and blocking is fun. Well, of course, it looks a lot better than a dead ball rebound, right? Yeah. But speaking of defense and blocking, that seemed to be Washburn's strategy. It worked especially in the first half, holding Lachey Holt to four points, forcing a lot of double and triple teams at her. Was that the strategy going in, or was that more of an improvisation after the first few minutes? Um, well, we all knew she was a good player because we've played against her before, and, well, like, we've scrimmaged against them, and we know she's a good player, so we knew we had to hold her down. Now, still some season to go, but this game having section implications, I know you were one win away from earning a state tournament berth. So what kind of focus and commitment does Washburn have this year to try to change that and get their way into a state tournament? Uh, 
and get some respect along with the boys who have done very well. Well, we work really hard in practice. We all try to be there every day, but of course school comes first. So. And fitting, as your head coach talked about how your team uh, skipped a practice to attend the meeting that was held earlier this week after the uh, incident that took place last week and as a sign of support. And so what motivated you guys to go out there and do the meeting? And just how, tell me how connected you are with this Washburn community. Well, Washburn community, we're really close. And we stand up for each other. Even though a few kids make a mistake, they're still part of the Washburn family. And we want to make sure they correct that mistake. and. Um, everyone makes mistakes, so we had to be there to catch them in the fall. Now, one question. I looked at the breakdown, and you said you'd like to have your hair done by everyone. So what do you mean by everyone here? Your teammates or the entire school, the state? What's what's the story behind that? Um, well, just before games, when we were sitting around, I don't know. I just like when people like brush my hair and play with my hair and, like, all my friends play with it in class because it's, like, really curly. So when you move on to college or the next level, is that the tradition you'll continue, or...? If they want to. <laughs> <laughs> and so looking ahead, uh, now 11-6 and six and uh, just getting some quality wins here. So what what does Washburn need to do looking forward and to, to keep this momentum going? We just need to keep conditioning and stay in shape because I know we're not a bigger team, but we're fast and we work hard, and that's one of our strengths. And final question, is there anyone you want to say hi to that may be watching this game? Um, my grandparents. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> Well, thanks for stopping by. Congratulations on your win tonight. And uh, we may see you uh, later on this season, maybe Twin Cities game. And if things go your way, perhaps a state tournament berth. Mm -hmm. All right, Chase Coley of Minneapolis-Washburn.